spiritual part demands two things. First, authenticity. Are you authentic? Whatever you are doing, are you authentic? The second thing it demands is intensity. Mm -hmm. Intensity, how intense are you in anything you are doing? If you are just lukewarm, there's no progress in spiritual part. Do you have the intensity of anything? Desire? Do you desire something in, with such intense, with such intensity? Do you have longing with such intensity? Or are you happy with such intensity? Are you happy? Just like a child, you know, it's so happy, it's so intensely happy it is. It's not just sitting and smiling. The smile and joy pours out from its whole body. Haven't you noticed that? Have you seen small baby? Six month old baby, see how it laughs. When it laughs, is joy contained in a little lukewarm fashion? <laughs> the joy of a child bursts Similarly, the life force in you should burst out from you. Every cell of your body should vibrant, should exhibit the life energy. Your whole system radiates. That is spiritual. Then you say, oh, you are doing something. You are living your potential. Intensity in your expression, intensity in your experience, intensity even in your misery will take you on spiritual path. Mm. <laughs> Not look for misery, if you are so desperate and you cry your heart out, you know, without shame, you are on the path. You are a seeker. So options. Intensely miserable, <laughs> intense longing, or intense desire, or intense expression of joy. There is no fifth condition. And authentically, not just dramatizing it. You know, you can make drama. Make a mood. But that doesn't come from deep within. If that, that is the case, then all the actors and actresses would be, would be living that full potential. But it is not so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Intense expression of life. Is the second sign of a seeker. That doesn't mean you intensely get angry and go. I mean, there are so many people who intensely get angry and justify that. We should not use knowledge as a shield. Use knowledge as an umbrella, not as a shield. Then because you are at loss, if you use knowledge as a shield to cover up your whatever shortcomings, then you are at loss. And again, when you recognize shortcomings, don't hold on to them. This is another problem. Oh, I am no good, I am no good. Self-blame. If you are blaming yourself, remember, there is no chance for you to have any progress. Because if you are blaming yourself, how can you go towards something which you are blaming? You try to stay away from that something which you blame. And if you blame yourself, will you ever be go, able to go deep within yourself? Huh? Self-blame prevents you from settling down. And if you cannot settle down, you are definitely going to blame others around you. 
And so we oscillate between self-blame and blaming others. This is the biggest pitfall on the path of evolution and the path to God. So whenever you blame, you're not blaming yourself. You're blaming God. So that golden rule we need to find, that golden line we need to find, that center point where you recognize the shortcomings but not start blaming yourself. The mere recognition take you further. Not denying and not blaming but recognizing. Are you all with me? Is your mind still here? I want 100% of you here. <laughs> I don't want only 30% of you here and then the f another 50% out somewhere in, your, in Santa Monica. <laughs> Huh? 100% intense. Do anything intense. Listening, seeing, tasting, smelling, crying, singing. I tell you, it's the shortest way. Patanjali. The propounder of yoga, he said that tivra samvega nam asana. That's the one who has the intensity for them. It's the yoga, the union, or the oneness of the mind becomes so easy. Are you all here? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Often when people are upset, they are intense. And people who are peaceful, who are in love and joy, they don't seem to exhibit the intensity. Isn't it? I would call it the the tamasic peace. Peace means very dull. Peaceful, I'm peaceful. Sort of inertia. Inertia can also be interpreted as peaceful. But the dynamism is often associated with anger, rage, frustration. Rare you find those who are intense even in peace. Are you getting what I'm saying? An intense peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is a goal you can aim at. And that's what this society needs, the world needs today, isn't it? See how many of you are really smiling, how many of you are not. <laughs> you know, we have made our smile so expensive. We smile once in a while, sometime now or then. And our anger, frustration, we distribute it freely, free of cost. Can't we make our smile cheaper? Hmm? 
Wisdom is when you make your smile cheap, in fact, distribute your smile free of cost and make your anger very expensive. You know, when we were in schools, if you are upset someday, one day, or, uh, you know, we were made to feel ashamed about it. If someone loses themselves, loses what you call, lose, lose the temper, everybody would look at them as though something is wrong with them. If a boy or a girl in the class shouts or does anything, everybody wonder what has happened to this person. It's so many days people will remember, oh, that person lost the temper. Because losing temper was not considered to be a very good thing to. Because the ideal was samadhi. Equanimity, how, how equanimity and how unperturbed a person was, that was given, that child or that student was really thought to be very high, very, it's good. I mean, pride was attached to unperturbedness. But today, pride somehow got attached to rage, frustration, aggressivity. Aggressivity, what do you say? Aggressiveness. Aggression. Aggression got itself hooked to prestige. Violence got hooked to... Because the ideal of Mahatma Gandhi, he had just maybe ten years, he must have gone. So everybody admired Mahatma Gandhi. So anyone who is peaceful and always ranked high, was given, you know, respect. But just within few years, the whole thing has changed, isn't it? And Gandhi used to read the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. And second chapter, this is what it said. How to be equanimous in your attitude. Impartial and equanimity was given so much importance, pride. It's not suppression again. It value to whichever values you attach the pride to, that is what blossoms in life, isn't it? You attach pride to violence, and violence will blossom, <laughs> what, come forth in life. Violence will be exhibiting in every action. Why not we smile more? You know, just look at the person next to you and see if they're really smiling. If they are not, just pinch them and make them smile. <laughs> Tell them either you cry or smile. <laughs> Nothing in between. This is a step to become like a child again. A child either cries or it smiles. Express yourself. And life finds an authentic expression. It progresses in the path of the spirit. For spirit is truth, spirit is love, spirit is joy. Spirit is all that, that we aspire, isn't that? Isn't that so? Hmm? You know, what stops you, what bottles you, 
is your problems. And you know, everybody else has the same problems. Slightly different problem. And people say, I want to talk to you, Guruji, alone. I said, there's no need. <laughs> In the ashram, I kept five baskets. I know what the problem is. Either the problem is about relationship, one basket. <laughs> Job or finance, another basket. <laughs> health and health related problem, third basket. <laughs> and miscellaneous, fourth one. <laughs> huh? Fifth big worry is about the society, about whatever country, about the nation, about the uh, world, environment, all these problems, you know. <laughs> but in that, are any complaints about me? <laughs> and put it in that, Guruji, you never meet with me, you never spend time. <laughs> Too many people, I don't get time, I don't get to do this, you don't let me allow this, etc., etc., whatever. <laughs> You don't give me personal attention. Oh, put all that thing there. <laughs> Five baskets, all the problems. Then there's nothing. And I have my own ways to reply to them all. Life is too short to keep solving problem one after another, I tell you. <laughs> Just wake up and walk ahead, problems will get solved by themselves. <laughs> you are not alone, my dear. Uh. Wake up! <laughs> you are not alone, all the problems are getting solved. And there is some power with you who's walking you through all the, pro all the problems. And when you feel that intense desire to offer, to write it down, put it, give it, send it, do anything. Huh? I'd say a teacher is a garbage collector. He won't say, oh, this is yesterday's garbage, this is the third day's garbage, no, why do you give me, no, no question. Any amount of garbage you can get. You know, the person who comes to collect garbage in front of your homes, they don't say, you, they don't quantify you, you can only give only two kgs of garbage, I won't take any more. <laughs> You'll be in trouble. <laughs> Unlimited quantity of garbage, dump it. And we have hesitation even to do that. This is irony. This is the irony. That we have hesitation to drop a garbage. Are you all here? See, I have no shame, I tell you. <laughs> Nor am I shy. I just say whatever comes here. If you take it, take it. If you don't want to take it, just drop it along with the garbage. <laughs> give back, give it back to me, no problem. But don't sit just like lifeless statue. Yeah? You know, that's why it's called satsang. Satsang means, you know what, where you can just drop all what people would think about me sort of things and authentically be there. 100% authentic, 
company, the company of the truth. Yeah? See the questions. Do you need to go through the questions? <laughs> <laughs> Answer them all. <laughs> you can sort them for Thank you for the grace you have brought to my life. How does one attain optimum physical health? <laughs> Don't worry about health a lot. on non-causal joy, non-causal joy. You know the cause and effect is again an illusion on one level. You know, some of you have this problem, okay, I read all these books, I know all this knowledge, but in practical life, it is not applicable. So what is the use? How many of you have this sort of question? Raise your hands. My dear, you should know there are two types of signs. One is the pure science, another is the applied science. You learn about thermodynamics, aerodynamics, but all that you learn in physics, thermodynamics, aerodynamics, all that is not applicable everyday life, is it? But the knowledge of it helps you in some point of time. You can just learn being a mechanic, how to repair a car. You take a diploma course, not even a diploma, three months Go and sit with the mechanic, he will tell you how to fix a car. But that is not enough to be an engineer. An engineer will have to know the whole mechanics, the dynamics of how the car functions. Right? So all that you, as a theory, you read, you study, may not come to your day-to-day -day use, but never discard them. Sometime in life they will come to your use, your help. It should just be there. Are you getting what I'm saying? At some point in life, in time, that will come to the help. If you see only practical application of knowledge, then nobody will study physics and chemistry, the pure science. But without pure science, there is no depth. There is no deeper understanding of the mechanics. There is no further innovations. How can you do further innovation when you, are, when you don't have the knowledge in depth about it, isn't it? So similarly, all this studying, this knowledge, hearing, though you may feel is not applicable to life now, 
some point of time when there is a dire need, these will come up. And they do help your life. So, there are two kinds. One help that comes direct, another help which is indirect help. There is one kind of joy which is direct, which is imminent. The other kind of joy which is indirect, which we do not obviously see the connection. Hmm? Like brushing your teeth every day doesn't give you any great joy directly, but it prevents you from toothache. It helps you from not having toothache. So in that manner, it is aiding your happiness, joy, indirect manner. Same with disciplines. Sometimes the disciplines that you practice, exercise or yoga, meditation, may not give you an immediate pleasure or joy or happiness. But in the indirect fashion, they do aid your growth. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the significance of the number 108? Significance is what we attach to it. But one of the significance that people have attached to 108 is there are nine planets, they, were, they counted nine though, there may be ten, uh, eleven. So nine planets and twelve constellations. So when nine planets move through twelve constellations, they make hundred and eight changes. Of these hundred and eight changes, they may be pleasant, unpleasant, whatever, to nullify the unpleasant, and to increase the pleasant um, effect of these changes, they would use, chant the mantras or the sounds so many times. This was an ancient way to do that. <coughs> Why do all the gods, saints, wizards, Prophets keep long hair, beard, and robes. <laughs> That's just their uniform, so you can recognize them. <laughs> People recognize only through dresses, this, this. They, because they don't have eyes to see the spirit behind. So perhaps this is a uniform. <laughs> there was one um, Indian freedom fighter. He is a great scholar. He had written many books and all. Bhakin Chandra. Chatterjee or some? Huh? Hakim Chandaji, he was invited for a dinner in the British time. He was invited for a dinner for his scholarly thing. And he was supposed to wear a coat and, you know, proper dress with a tie, coat and all that suit. But he just walked with a robe like this, dhoti and a simple shirt. He was not allowed in. So he went back home and he put on the suit and came. And in the dining table he was sitting. When the dinner was served, he was feeding it into the pockets. <laughs> People asked him, why? See, <laughs> I was not allowed to the dinner. It's only this coat that couldn't let me inside this place. <laughs> so I'm, I'm feeding the coat. And he used to say, come on, eat. <laughs> you eat. You eat. <laughs> 
So don't, don't have to be hung up on the dresses, huh? long hair and beard. This is just, I don't have time to do all that shaving. <laughs> okay. These are not an essential requirement for spiritual growth. Just wake up and say, you are connected to God, however you are. It's like, you know, a mother looks at some children are happy and cheerful, some are all the time whining and wailing and what you call, crying and complaining. So you choose what type of child you want to be. Of course, the, the former one, otherwise you wouldn't be here. <laughs> hmm. Are we all God, really? Is this absolutely 100% reality? Please expound on. <laughs> Certain questions, it's easy to say no and get away with it. <laughs> but that is not true. <laughs> Forget about God. First you have to tell me what is your concept of God. But if you just say, God is love, I tell you, you are love. Even if you are angry, upset, frustrated, whatever state you are, you are still love. Love distorted, fermented. <laughs> Spoiled a little bit here and there. All the negative emotions are nothing but distortions of love. Love, when it gets fermented, becomes jealousy, anger, hatred, all these things. Frozen love becomes hatred. <laughs> Just a little heat to it, it will melt. Hmm. 